In November 1842, a committee of the Royal Society met in a room at Somerset House, and this was the Microscope Committee. Mm. Presumably in a very small room. <laughs> <laughs> Probably in a, a medium-sized room. They wanted to further this science, and they actually had quite an ingenious way of doing it. What was this, Keith? Uh, they held a competition to get a prize-winning microscope. And they put an ad in the Times newspaper, and we actually have here the minutes of the meetings, and one of them was Dr. Roger of Roger's Thesaurus fame. Who else was there? Gideon Mantel, the great fossil expert. Baden Powell is in the chair, right. and Charles Wheatstone is there too. So they came up with the wording for this advertisement they wanted to put in the paper, and here it is. We actually have a clipping. So this is from the Times of November the 19th, 1842. The Royal Society offers £100 for the best microscope. The instrument is to be the best compound achromatic microscope having not less than five different powers, with a micrometer eyepiece, a condenser and the usual accompanying apparatus. Just between you and me, Keith, I think if you made a microscope capable of reading that tiny typeface, you probably should deserve the prize anyway. I can't believe how small that is. So, who won the competition? What did the winning microscope look like? Here it is. What's in the box? <laughs> All right, let's do it. We are going to show you an award-winning microscope as decided by the Microscope Committee to be the winner of their £100 prize. This is very, very heavy, people. It is extreme. Whoa. Oh! There we go. You were carrying it around like a feather before, Keith. That's really heavy. Yep. Who made this, by the way? Who was the winner? Well, you can see because they've very proudly engraved the manufacturer's name just on that base plate there. Powell and Leland? That's right, yeah, London instrument makers. And we can see that it was accepted by the Royal Society because they've engraved the Royal Society's name and the date, 1843, on the base. So this is the focus, so if you just pull that up. Oh yeah. Compound microscope rises. I mean, this is a classic microscope design. This is not much different from what I was using in high school and things like that. It hasn't changed yeah, much. It's, it's just beautifully well made. So that's where you would mount your, your slides or anything else you had to look at. It's really beautiful movement, Keith. It's yeah. still yeah. smooth as anything. And the mirror can move here. I can't tell you how beautiful and smooth this is. It's fabulous. Well, we haven't finished opening the box yet though, Brady, because there are boxes within boxes here. I know, it's Ye exciting. Ah, there we go. So you'll find all your accessories in these side boxes. Okay, these are all your dongles and add-ons and oh, mm, I see. Yeah. Wow, we've got all sorts of lenses and extra bolt-ons and little glass. And we haven't even seen the other box yet. Oh, you're spoiling me, Keith. I know. Oh, yeah. Selection of lenses. So all these extra bits so that you could obviously modify, change the magnification, things like that. That's right. This would have been more than a display piece. Would the society then have started lending it out to scientists? That's right. It would have been used and the society did always lend out its instrument collection to whichever scientists wanted to use it. So who knows what amazing science has been done with this microscope. I'm sure you're looking at this, the workmanship, the beauty, all the add-ons, and you're thinking, this must have been a certainty to win first prize when they saw it. And that's more true than you might think. And we're going to show you why. Mm. Because we have another committee meeting here. They're coming together to decide their winner after the deadline has passed. And we all know what winner they chose. They chose this one. Why did they choose this one? All is revealed in these mm. minutes. So at the start of the minutes, we have a little reference to a guy called Ross, who they thought was going to submit a microscope. And for some reason, he didn't. He couldn't make one that complied. Mm -hmm. And they get onto the business of examining the entries they did receive. Yep. It says, the committee, having carefully examined a microscope and the apparatus accompanying it, which has been sent to the society by Mr. Powell, and which is the only one they have received. This was actually the only entry in the competition. It was a pretty narrow field. And coming back to how small this advertisement is in the mm. Times, I'm beginning to look at this ad in a new light now. I'm beginning to think maybe the instrument makers didn't even know this competition was <laughs> happening. So there we have it, people. The £100 winning, award-winning microscope. But as a little bit of a bonus at the end, we've got another little piece of microscope paraphernalia that 
Keith has dug out of the archives. And another box, of course. Oh, of course, another box. And this one, as you can see, has a maker's name on the front of it. So this is e -Lights. And what you get inside is a real step change in microscope making. This is from about 1913. And this is the first truly binocular microscope. So this is when germ theory has taken hold. You really needed microscopes to examine bacteria and other things. So here you have a microscope where you can use both eyes. Thank you very much, Keith. You've delivered the goods, multiple boxes, boxes within boxes, a microscope, an ad that can only be read with a microscope, and some fascinating minutes from what has now become my favourite committee in the history of the Royal Society, the Microscope Committee. Well, we have here three very large lenses, and these are lenses from aerial telescopes made in the 1680s. So you can see they are inscribed and the lenses themselves are rather nicely mounted. And these were made by Christian and Constantine Huygens, the great Dutch instrument makers and astronomers. 